everyone! Today we have a new watercolor painting tutorial where we are painting this simple summery window with flowers. We are using a line and a wash technique in this video, which I think works really well for any types of architectural illustrations. And it just means that we are using a black pen to outline the image and then do the coloring with watercolors. I'm using this B5 size Etcher's Lab sketchbook, but any watercolor paper will work with this painting. We are not doing much blending in this video, which means that even a little bit lower quality paper will work just fine. Then I started everything from a pencil sketch, but we are speeding through that a little bit in this video, just because I think it's quite difficult for you to see what I'm doing here. And we are drawing the image again with the black pen anyway, but I still think that starting out with a pencil sketch will make the process much easier and it will take off so much pressure from the inking phase. So I placed my window pretty much exactly in the middle of the page and then we will need a little bit of room around it too, especially for the shutters on the sides. But after I had slowly figured out the size and most of the elements in this pencil sketch, the last thing I did was to roughly sketch the placements for all the bigger flowers, because that way we can erase any unnecessary pencil lines from those spots and keep the flowers a little bit cleaner for the final image. But now that the pencil sketch is done, we can start the actual lining phase. And I started this by using these two pretty thin micron pens. We are deepening some of these lines later with a thicker pen once we have some darker shadows in the picture. But I think it's always pretty safe to start with a thin pen that will give you more delicate line work. I started here by adding some scribbly lines to the flowers because this will pretty much be on top of everything else in the picture. So I think it's a good idea to draw them out first and then add the rest of the details around them. Otherwise, we are just going over all the basic shapes here. I wanted to create some simple decorations around the window so that it has this older European appearance. I've only been to Paris once in my life, but that's immediately where my mind goes when I see pictures of these types of windows. And that was definitely the main inspiration behind this whole picture. But anyway, once we have all the main shapes outlined, it's time to finally reach out for the watercolors and start the coloring process. I leave all the color names I mixed to the screen, but as always, you'll be able to get similar colors by mixing other shades too, so I would encourage you to play with whatever watercolor palette you have and see what types of colors you'll be able to get by mixing different shades together. I actually started the coloring from the flowers too. So I mixed this light reddish pink shade and started to just add these simple layers everywhere. I would say that it's better to leave these first layers too light rather than going in with something too dark right from the start because we are always able to darken things up later but going backwards is something that you can't really do with watercolors. 
So make sure that you add enough water to the paint mixture to make it lighter. But at the same time, since we're working with pretty small shapes, it's good to not have your brush to be too wet either. Because it might make it difficult to keep the color where you want it to be. I usually have some tissue papers next to me where I can tap off some of the excess water or you can just use your pants. I've definitely done both. <laughs> but anyway, I tried to add some defined leaf shapes here, especially on the edges of our flower group and on the branches that are separating from it. Playing with some different tones is a really good idea too. And to get these slightly muted colors, I often like to mix a little bit of black or brown into my colors, which will just make them a little bit less vibrant. After that, we are painting some of these bigger areas in the painting, like the shutters and the window itself. I wanted the shutters to be the main pop of color in this picture, which is why I chose this bright mint green shade for it. I think mint green looks really pretty against pink flowers, but you could also go for some different color combinations, like bright blue shutters with some red or orange flowers, or maybe yellow flowers with purple shutters. So there are many ways to alter this image to your own liking. And if you're wondering, yes, I accidentally smudged the right side by resting my palm on the wrong place. So maybe try to avoid doing that. But anyway, then it's usually easy to add contrast in a picture like this by coloring the inside of the window with a pretty dark color. It's how windows often look like in pictures too. And it makes the frame pop very nicely against it. And after that, I just kept adding these light base color layers everywhere and tried to keep the rest of the colors here quite neutral. So lots of light brown and gray tones so that the few color accents could shine. At this stage, I felt like my picture was looking pretty washed out since we only have some of these light colors everywhere. So this is the time to start building some depth and intensity by adding darker shadows. And we are also intensifying some of the line work. I wanted this balcony decoration to really stand out from the final image. So this is where I switched to a thicker pen and went over the line work again to draw much more attention to this detail. 
Doing this also shows you how dark you'll need to go with the rest of the shadows. So I also added some darker lines to the rest of the image. And then we will start layering watercolors to create more shadows and details on top of the previous layers. Like for example, I added some shadows to the shutters to create the appearance of some panels in them and some shadows in the window frame will also make the image more dimensional. When we keep doing this pretty quickly, the flowers and leaves also start to look a little bit light against the other elements, so we'll need to add some shadows and brighter tones to them too. I would say to maybe switch to a smaller brush at this point, because you still want to leave some of those first lighter layers untouched to leave highlights to the shapes. So especially when it comes to the flowers and leaves, I focused most of these darker shadows on the center and lower parts of the shapes. Then I just repeated the same steps once more by first adding some more line work and then adding even more shadows and depth to wherever the picture needed it. Overall, I think my image could have benefited from some warmer brown or beige tones. I think it got a little bit too cool tone gray, which was throwing me off a little bit here. But overall, it didn't bother me enough that I would have refilmed this whole video. So maybe that's something you can just try out at home.
Anyway, the very last step that we're gonna add here were these few highlights with a white acrylic pen that I think can really elevate a watercolor painting like this and bring back some sharp highlights. I didn't add too many details with it this time, but just using it to straighten some of the window frame lines, then adding some highlights to the shutters and flowers, and maybe outlining the balcony decoration gave a little bit more polished and crisp look to the painting in my opinion. But after that's done, we are finally done with this whole painting. I really hope this gave you new ideas and maybe a few tips to incorporate in your own painting sessions. And if you choose to try this out, definitely let me know how it went for you. If this was your first time around here and you'd like to stay tuned for more tutorials in the future, definitely consider subscribing. But I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.